Welcome to my four-year update video on my Model 3. It also happens to be my 200th video since starting in May of 2018. Let's get started. Check out my three-year update for the major things that happened last year. This video will cover everything that has happened from May 2021 until today and what to expect in the coming year. I received my Model 3 long-range rear-wheel drive on May 17, 2018. As of this video, I have 48,260 miles. I have driven an average of 12,000 miles a year since I've had the car, which is fairly normal amount of miles for the average American. The first two years, I drove 14,000 miles each year, and then in 2020, I only drove 8,000 miles due to the pandemic. This year, I drove 12,172 miles, closer to the number I drove in 2018 and 2019. As far as charging costs this year, I used 570 kilowatt hours, or $72.49 at superchargers. For AC charging, I used 3,008 kilowatt hours, or $398.56. Thus, a total electricity cost of 3,578 kilowatt hours, or $471.05, at a cost of 3.9 cents per mile. For the lifetime numbers, I used 1,931 kilowatt hours, or $207.16 for supercharging. For AC charging, I used 11,959 kilowatt hours, or $1,584.56. Total electricity used is 13,890 kilowatt hours, or $1,791.72, at a cost of 3.7 cents per mile. There is lots of interesting information on the battery page of the Scan My Tesla app. I have an upcoming video covering the iOS version coming soon. See the link in the top right of the screen for this episode. Some items to note on this screen include the total number of charging cycles and discharging cycles here. 278 and 270, respectively. You also get a lot of information on the kilowatt hours that go into and out of the car. For example, Regen has totaled 4,955 kilowatt hours over the life of the car. You can also find the total AC and DC charging, which I used earlier in the video. Drive total, discharge total, and you can figure out how much is lost to stationary usage or vampire losses by just adding up and subtracting some of the numbers. The full ideal range shows how a full pack is currently rated for range. This number can vary based on the state of the BMS of the pack. I've seen it anywhere from 288 to 295 in the last couple months. The nominal full pack shows how much kilowatt hours is available, in this case 67.9. The number full pack when new is a program default of 77.8. The real number when new varies from car to car. If you subtract the 3% energy buffer, it shows about 6.9 kilowatt hours has been lost due to degradation. However, I don't know the original number of kilowatt hours of the pack, so I can't calculate a true degradation with this program. Degradation is a debatable calculation. It's not definite with these numbers. A rough guess of 291 miles out of the original 310 miles, which is about 6% over 48,000 miles in four years. Due to the full rated range varies between 288 to 295, this degradation number varies, so I don't get hung up on it. I have had 12 service visits in the first four years. That does seem excessive to me. Seven were at the service center, which is luckily only five miles from my house, and five were mobile service at my house, which is really convenient. For this year, I have had four service visits. 
On September 25th, 2021 at the service center, I had the 12 volt battery replaced due to the screen warning of an eminent decline. This is expected and normal between the age of three to four years on a Tesla. I'm glad my car gave me a warning. Some people have not and left them with a dead car. Of course, this was covered under warranty. And if it's not, it's only $85 for a replacement battery. My next service center visit was on December 1st, 2021. I noticed for about a month or so that the trunk LED lights were flickering and not staying on consistently. Service replaced the trunk wiring harness to fix the flickering truck lights. This is a known issue and has resulted in a recall. The harness wires will chaff from touching metal parts on the car and will eventually fray and fail. The updated trunk harness will be replaced sometime this year. Tesla will contact me when it's ready. At least the new one should be fine until then. Without asking while I was there, Tesla also resealed the area around both of the front upper control arm ball joints with urethane. This is a known issue. Both of these were covered under warranty. On February 24th, 2022, I had the left and right side repeater cameras replaced by mobile service. This is a known issue that occurred due to the big software update in December that added cameras when using the turn signal. This was voluntary, basically to fix the glare when using the turn signal on the cameras. It cost $260 for the parts and $52.50 for labor plus tax for a total of $335.16. This was totally done on my part and not covered under warranty. For the purpose of my channel, I felt it was important to see what costs were involved in doing this. On April 30th, 2022, I had a service center visit to look at a ticking sound while the car was driving slowly. Here are some examples of the sound. Service found a creaking noise coming from the rear axles. They lubricated the rear axles and retorqued all suspension components. This was covered under warranty. I had the front and rear brakes inspected and cleaned. They lubricated the calipers and verified the brake pads are functioning correctly. This cost me $68.25 plus tax for a total of $73.20. I also had them inspect the front and rear suspension and had it retorqued. This also included an alignment check for a total of $70 plus tax or $75.08. The whole service visit was $148.28, which I think was very reasonable. This segues into warranty. The suspension and brake inspections I did specifically since the warranty was ending. The standard bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty on the Model 3 is 4 years or 50,000 miles, whichever comes first. As of this video, I'm a few days before the warranty ends and also near the max number of miles. What to do now? Some people have asked about extended warranties for Tesla vehicles. I will be doing a video soon that will discuss this topic. I think it's important to consider Tesla does not offer extended warranties on the Model 3 or Y. I recommend taking your car into service before it expires to make sure everything is functioning correctly have any items that are not working, or have any issues looked at. On April 30th, as I mentioned above, I had service look at the front and rear suspension to make sure all the parts were working well and all the bolts are torqued correctly. Of all the things on the car, the suspension is the most concern at four years old. Some things may be covered under warranty, like the front controller arms, which are a known issue. I also had the brakes looked at for the first time in four years, since that is a good amount of time for inspection. If you live in a colder climate with heavily salted winter roads, I recommend having the brakes serviced more often, say every two years, to make sure the calipers are not sticking. Brake pads are known to corrode with salted road conditions. Now is a good time for an update on the tires. 
My original MX M4 tires lasted 23,000 miles and I had them replaced in January two years ago. The new tires are the Michelin Pilot Sport AS3 Plus and they are currently at 25,000 miles. They have about 4 30 seconds of an inch of tread life remaining out of the original 9 30 seconds when new. At the current rate, it will probably be around late summer when the tires are worn out. I have had a solid two years of driving on these two tires and now I can give long-term efficiency numbers. Also note that I have used aero covers on both tires during this time. The MX M4 had an average of 237 watt hours per mile or 142 MPGE. The Pilot Sport AS3 Plus had an average of 248 watt hours per mile or 136 MPGE. As you can see, the MX4 are very efficient, the most efficient tire that I know of for the Model 3 and Y. The difference is 4.64% or 11 watt hours per mile. Also take into consideration that the MX M4 also costs significantly more than the Pilot Sport AS3 Plus, 287 versus 220 per tire, which if you replace tires every two years, that's $268 each time you replace them. So depending on the price of your electricity, it may be cheaper in the long run to use the Pilot Sport All Season 3 Plus. This leads to replacement tires. I am considering both the Michelin Pilot Sport AS4, the newer version of my current tires, and also the Michelin Cross Climate 2 tires. Both are highly rated. Since my current Michelin Pilot Sport AS3 Plus have about 430 seconds of an inch of tread depth, I will probably be replacing them during the summer at around 30,000 miles. At that point, they will be covered for replacement under the Michelin 45,000 mile warranty when they reach 230 seconds of an inch. The normal replacement tread depth. So I will be getting the new tires at a prorated discount, probably around 30 to 35% off of the total price. I'll do a video this summer when this occurs. When comparing both of the Michelin Pilot Sport AS4 and the Cross Climate 2, it seems the Cross Climate 2 gets slightly better reviews and ratings. Check out this chart, and it also compares it to the MX M4s. As you can see, the Cross Climate 2 has the highest ratings for all these different categories. The only thing it doesn't is in price, but for an additional $10 a tire, I think it may be worth it to have such good performance. So it looks most likely I'll be getting the Cross Climate 2 when it comes time to replace the tires. I'll now give you a tour of the car and highlight some of the updates for this year. On the inside, here are some big changes. I added a swivel mount for the Tesla screen. I recently added the Hanshou 9-inch dash screen that has worked great on a recent long-distance trip. Having a better route planner using Apple CarPlay was really nice. The second thing I like is using the Sirius XM app for music. Here you can see the 30 degrees range of swivel from left to right on the screen. Below that, I added a new Taptez wireless charger that was needed for my iPhone 13 Pro, which came out last year. This one works with horizontal and vertical charging, even with a case and thicker camera lens bulge. Inside the center console, I also replaced the first-gen USB hub with a newer version that allows all USB ports to support data as well as charging. Inside the hidden door is an SSD that I have been reliably using for a few years. Although I've had this longer than a year, I do think the cup holder adapter works better with cans, cups, and bottles than without. Here are some more views of the real carbon fiber dash and the new instrument panel screen. The interior has worked well. The black polyurethane seats are still in great condition and the color black is much easier to keep clean. I also love this new headrest pillow that I got this past year. 
Also in the front and rear are the newer floor mats by Oedro that are working really well. Though I do have to remove them for a thorough cleaning after winter use real soon. This is the trunk area and underneath the mat is the subfloor. I keep a cooler in here for trips to the grocery store for frozen items and on trips to keep drinks cold. And around the front we have the frunk area. Nothing much has changed here. See the links in the video description for all of these items. As far as the exterior goes, the most notable change is over the last year I've been using the Rymetrix Silver Orbital Aero Covers almost exclusively since last summer due to the look and the efficiency. Not much else on the exterior has changed. I still like the look of the painted mud flaps and they do keep the rocker panels and rear bumper a bit cleaner. Finally, I'm doing this video on this beautiful day at the North Carolina State University Solar House, which was originally built in 1981. The primary purpose of the Solar House is for STEM education and outreach. Anyone looking for home construction or personal home improvements should contact the North Carolina Clean Energy Technology Center. Tours are also available. See the link in the video description. In conclusion, it's been a good year, and I've been on four long distance trips with the car. The supercharger network is expanding, and each time I go on a trip, there are more options and faster too, with V3 superchargers being installed at a rapid rate. I look forward to year five with the car and hope everything goes well, and no unexpected service visits especially now since the basic warranty has expired. I recently replaced the wiper blades after several years of use. The only notable thing I expect to do this summer is to replace the cabin filters in June. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching my 200th video and many more will be coming this year. See you in the next video. Hi there.